I'm in a robe. And this coffee's cold. We make fun of a lot of movies on this channel. And I understand that some of the people who watch my videos might be fans of these movies. So I... Am I in focus? Thank you. I can understand why fans of a particular film might be angry about it. There's hundreds of thousands of hours that go into getting a film made. Thousands of people are employed, all working their asses off, trying to put something together that people will like. Here's what I'll say. My opinion should not be taken as, as fact, right? Like, art is subjective. What I dislike about a certain project, hundreds of other people will like. There's no real objectivity to it. For as much as I am trying to touch on some of the actual film making elements in a lot of my commentaries. I'm also picking movies that I know I'm going to be able to comment on in a way that is entertaining, not just necessarily informative. You know, it's not a TED talk. That being said, I also don't think you should be allowed to make fun of other people if you can't also make fun of yourself. There's something to be said for people who are overly critical of everything everybody else does, and then the second someone is critical of them, they get very defensive about it. I'm aware of the hypocrisy of me having said that after the spiel I just gave. What I'm trying to get at today is that we're gonna make fun of some of my stuff, some of my artistic endeavors that re really should have just stayed ideas. So we're gonna listen to my mixtape. God. So in the week leading up to me graduating university, <laughs> I spent, and I, I would like this out there, I spent four days putting a mixtape together. I really like songwriting. And by songwriting, I mean like just the lyrics. Lyricist, I guess, is a better word. Where am I going with this? Yeah, so my, so my, so my friends in college were, they were all in a band together, and they, they were writing some original stuff for a little while. And because everybody used to rehearse it at my apartment, uh, I kind of got a look in on that sort of process and wanted to try it for myself. There was a couple things holding me back. Number one, I can't sing. And outside of being able to butcher the guitar, I can't really play an instrument. Despite all that, I was not deterred. It just became about how do I go around those rather substantial obstacles. The solution was to put together a hip hop mixtape. I would be very hesitant to put that label on it, but I feel like of all the genres, it's definitely closest to that one. The record was called <laughs> Chi Chi the Goblin's Memoirs of the Absent-Minded. Here's my thinking. At the time that I was putting this together, there was a bunch of Lil's popping up everywhere, right? You have Lil Wayne, of course, who's the forefather of the Little. There was Lil Yachty, right? And then Pump was one. So there was just that, at the time I felt like there was a lot of Lil's rolling around. And I thought, saturated, we need to find our own avenue. And we'll go more the, the Chance the Rapper route, the Tyler the Creator route. So I came up with Chi Chi the Goblin. As bad as this, record is there was a lot of thought that went into the elements around it so the name chi chi the goblin if you look up what chi chi means the definition is actually attempting stylish elegance but achieving only an over elaborate pretentiousness which i would argue is probably still my brand today as far as the goblin bit is concerned i was a pretty big gorillas fan growing up. Demon Days was probably the second album i ever owned and i just i don't know the it's the pretentiousness again, the aesthetic of that whole group that was sort of independent of the musicians involved in it, I thought was really interesting because it then, <laughs> it, it just became about the music and the band itself as opposed to like the artists putting all that stuff together. And I, I always kind of felt like the characters looked a bit goblin-esque, which they're not, you know, they're gorillas. So it was founded there and then branched off into its own thing. Uh, and then a good rule of thumb when you're coming up with an album title, I found it is have contradictions in it because it makes it sound far more insightful and deep than it actually is. Memoirs of the absent-minded. He's absent-minded. How does he have memoirs? You know, a little bit kind of that thing. Other good examples might be Broken Heart of a Robot or The Poor Man's Well. You know, just a good, those are good jumping off points for trying to come up with something that sounds like an album title. I would like to reiterate that none of this music you're about to hear is any good. Okay.
So there was four songs. You had Demons, Amara, Unhinged, and To Whom It May Concern. I guess the first one is Demons, so that should be the first one we listen to, right? The reason I really hate this song is because I think one of the most overplayed lines in pop music especially is this idea of having demons in your mind. Every pop artist of the last 10 years has some point or the others seem to have used that line, where it's like they're just these tormented people and they're so you know, dark and edgy and everything. And then I used it myself. God. So I bought the beats for these. I can't produce. I just kind of went on like one of those beat sites and uh, found songs that I like came up with melodies and things for as I was listening on the site. And then if I came up with something that I thought was good, I did this in four days. Then I would buy it and write the whole thing. So we're just gonna listen to it. I'm gonna be so pitchy. Oh God. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, no, okay. Um, so, yeah, I can't sing. I prefaced that. But I knew that the telephone vocal modulator could make you sound like you can't see it. I didn't, I was using, like, I think it was literally GarageBand. I think it was just GarageBand. And, like, they had the, vo the telephone vocals in GarageBand, and that was where my voice sounded the best. So there's no auto-tune on any of this. <laughs> okay, so I remember this now. I thought it would be interesting if each verse of the lyrics was built out, like, who, what, when, where, and why. So I do, like, four bars with, like, every sentence starting with who, and then it goes on to what, and then when, and... You got the idea. Okay, let's just keep going. What should I acquire for all these trepidations? And what's she trying to disguise with all that flirtation? And I also, <laughs> so I, I got, have gotten better with like Adobe and stuff since this. I'm actually using that to edit a lot of my stuff now. And I can hear like the pops because I didn't have a pop filter on my microphone. This is going to be way too technical and nobody's going to care about this. But that's bothering me more than most of the stuff I'm hearing at the moment. I'm trying to be very monotonous. It was, I think I was inspired a little bit by Saturn bars for this, which is Gorilla songs like, I'm at the corner star, I got that. I'm at a bass. Uh... But it sounds very lazy when they sing it, and I thought that would be a good way again of trying to navigate around the fact that I'm not great at singing. I do like the beat still. I'm, it, there's a, uh, <laughs> there was a concept for this song. It's not based on truth, obviously. It was, again, that tortured artist idea of he's struggling with everything around being a successful musician. He likes that he's had the career that he's had, but then a lot of the minutia of being in the music industry he finds very troubling. Oh, I'm halfway through the first song. We have four to go. This is honestly one of the more creative ones as well. Oh, don't talk about the news. Don't talk about the news. Don't talk about the news. Music and movies and stuff. I don't think they should ever feel preachy at people. If your story is dealing with some really intense messages, that's fine because then it's it's like almost contained within the story and that's what the story is exploring. But when it feels like two characters are just saying things to each other that you can almost feel are like for the audience's benefit and trying to get the audience to go, whoa, I never thought about it that way. Most people like listen to music and watch movies to try and escape all that especially now with it just being everywhere all the time. I don't know, personally, I'm making an effort to avoid that. We haven't talked about the cover art either. So I basically just had my buddy take a photo of me on my balcony. Um, no, we don't need to listen to that bit again. <laughs> yeah, I, and then I just kind of threw it through a filter system. It was just like a standard template. I hate the fonts of both the name and the title. It's not even like cropped properly, so I'm missing half of the word because I didn't do it to the margins of SoundCloud. Oh my god. <sighs> okay, yeah, so. How to pause it? How do I pause it? Thank you. 
Jeez. So I had heard from like this producer's thing that he tried to make every chorus sound different. It's like a way of making your songs feel like they're building. Your second chorus has to be different from your first chorus a little bit just to feel like it's not repeating. And so in this case, I, I lowered the pitch on me just going, nah, woo. Oh, that's funny. Man, the song's long, too. The song's four minutes and 29 seconds. Songs shouldn't be that long anymore. Nobody has the attention span for that. <laughs> when will the novice be a teacher? When will the leader be a dreamer? When will the breather accept the reefer? And when will the cheaters return our t-shirts? Okay. <laughs> No, no. Oh man. On to song number two. I was in Berlin and I'd heard uh, Jimi Hendrix's Hey Joe for the first time. And because he was addressing me directly, I was really hooked to that song. Probably a narcissist. Pitchy. You can hear the telephone vocal. Let's think, let's think about those lyrics. Mara, I didn't know you were back in town. Amara, you look so good in that floral print button down. That's not a bad lyric. It just sounds awful. <laughs> uh, that whole thing about the song building as well. I totally ignored for this song. So it's just a lot of the same. We don't have to keep going with this. It's it's fine. Seems like you're I'm so God, I'm such a bad I'm such a bad singer. Why did I do this? <laughs> Why did I do this? Why am I making this? I think I have to skip that song. I, for one thing, it's so long and I I just can't listen to you that. Oh, but there's only four and I'm gonna need footage. Oh no! There's kind of this idea that's pretty popular that you should follow your dreams and don't listen to the haters. You can often feel sometimes like it's difficult to tell who the haters are. You might be surprised and find that people who are hating on your stuff are actually your friends. But in a lot of cases, it's probably a good thing. <laughs> oh, there's a couple of hey yeah hey, uh, in there when I'm on Mumford and Sons. Why is this song so long? Such a twat. It's just the same thing for four minutes. Okay, okay, okay. Go to the outro. It's just the, this better, yeah, it's the outro. Oh, I think that's the worst one. Can't remember, but I'm pretty sure it, it gets slightly better from there. So we're on to song three. This one's called Unhinged. This was definitely more of a gorillas homage. I'm so sorry to the gorillas, by the way. I, I don't mean to associate this drivel with the awesome stuff you guys put out, but I was clearly going for a bit of a gorillas thing here. Conceptually, this song is about a girl who breaks up with a guy who ends up being cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs and riding that crazy train. <laughs> it's got so pitchy. Fuck. No, this is worse. This is worse than the, the last one. So in a cold sweat with fear in a soul and a cigarette for damage control, our skittish heroine sets the goal of losing the lunatic once and for all. Is that any good? I can't actually decide. What's the plan? Oh, oh, the breakdown. No, this is so bad. It's not even on beat. God damn it. That's like a Dr. Seuss thing. She was finally free and brimming with glee. It was clear to see. Yeah, it's just, it's Dr. Seuss. And then straight back into the chorus. The pitchy ass chorus. Oh, I changed it. The thing to take away from this is it's not cool to be a dick. I mean, it's facts. Is it too preachy? That's not for the artist to decide. Okay, the last song, To Whom It May Concern, is its title. The concept was, it had to do with like rappers going broke. Artists that get really big really quick and then spend all their money super quick as well. Now presenting me. I've used that joke a number of times in different things where it's like, ladies and gentlemen, now presenting me. I think it's so funny, but it's not. 
Oh god, no, I can't. I'm hyping myself up in the ad libs. <laughs> Gotta support yourself. Sounds like you are. Fuck off, you're so shit. No, you're not. You're killing nothing. Why? Why? Not all of them, but some of these lyrics I still, I, I don't hate. I just wish I could sing, man, and I wasn't as cringe. I am cringe embodied. Stop preaching at Peachel. Peachels? Definitely don't preach at Peaches, but just stop preaching, just stop, you know, you're not wise. It's, yeah, ah, Chi-Chi. It's trying to be insightful, but it just comes across pretentious. Damn, I was true to that brand. Can we wrap this up, please? Oh, here we go, we got a metaphor here. Fuck whatever anyone says, it's not like you did it for them. Hatred's like pencil lead, don't let it under your skin. Not a bad metaphor. I'm going back, I keep going backwards and forth between hating this, and then sometimes the lyrics maybe go, oh, okay, okay. I get what it was going for, but maybe you should have tried to sell them to someone else. I hope this makes fans of any of the movies that I made fun of previously feel a little bit better. I've never claimed to be superb at everything I've ever attempted. And yeah, I think, you know, don't listen to the haters, uh, but maybe if your friends are telling you that your stuff needs work, listen to them, because uh, then you don't end up with things like that. Appreciate you tuning in.